You know, there are some days in the Hero ISL calendar which stand out just a little bit more than the others. And today is one of them. In the evening, we're going to be faced with the Kolkata Derby, the iconic Kolkata Derby between SC East Bengal and ATK Mohan Bagan. And that is, of course, going to be a big talking point of our Let's Football Live episode today. But apart from that, we have lined up for you a very, very special guest. In fact, all of the guests that we do have on the Let's Football Live show are special. But this one in particular is a bona fide league legend. Because let's admit it, sometimes we at our own end are a bit too eager to brand and christen people. But in the case of this individual, it is not an exaggeration to say that. So I will just reveal who that is very, very briefly. But before that, I shall be joined by Shaiju Damodran, Pulas Thar, and Kaushik Varun. Guys, hello and welcome. Happy Saturday. How hello, are you? Hello. Fine, fine. Everything is fine. Very excited for the evening, of course. No doubt about that. And very excited for who's going to be joining us on the show today, Shaiju Chetan. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That, that and, laugh just gives it away. Actually, actually, he's a nostalgia for me. Right, right. We'll, we'll explore that. Uh, but right before we get uh, Bartholomew Igbeche into the screen, I just want to briefly go over the Kolkata derby that's going to be played later in the day. Pulas, have you ever happened uh, to have the chance to be a commentator on the derby? Yes, uh, for the last few years, in fact. I think for the last uh, five odd years. Um, ah, okay, okay. Wow. <laughs> uh, uh, but but uh, last season, of course, I did the second one this season as well. The second, so tonight, uh, I'm very grateful that I'm going to be on air once again. And I think oh, uh, Shaiju and Varun will tell you that uh, when the when the roster comes out uh, <laughs> even though every game is important uh, don't don't uh, you know that that's there but you always scroll your eyes down and you check once just uh, to be sure do you have the derby and uh, thankfully when you do of course it's a big game it's it's a big day for for everyone involved no doubt about that so it's the same kind of nerves in preparation for commentators as it is for for the players is it I think so. I think so because uh, you have to um, you have to live up to the uh, to the game, right? To the, to the day, to the billing, yes, yeah, uh, to, to the whole thing, <laughs> and and, uh, and and the excitement is there, the nerves are there, but at the same time, it's a good kind of thing because you're excited to you know kind of go out there and you know be part of this story, which yeah. I think is one of the. I think that's the. It's a big honor to be part of this event, and and yeah, so I think both of these. Men, these senior commentators with me will agree with that. Yeah, Varun's been keeping himself busy in the run-up to the derby. Varun, how is it interviewing uh, Philip Derader and uh, Karim Bencharif? Of course, two iconic uh, figures in Indian football uh, from the past. Super. So, it was really fun. You know, I've always seen them in the technical areas, in the dugouts and, uh, you know, sharing a screen space with them, interviewing them. They were like lovely human beings. They still remember the derby moment. They share their memories. They're following the game and they're looking forward to the derby also. They discussed that. They shared that. So, it was really lovely. And, uh, you know, regarding uh, some memories you were asking about the commentary thing, I would also like to share, I have been part of a derby, you know, as an assistant referee and that too at the under 13 wow. level. So I was assistant referee for a derby at the under 13 level and that was like so much of pressure. So imagine how's the pressure like for the normal derby. The mini derby, yeah? That's kind what of. they call it? <laughs> no, absolutely. So Varun, did you find at that under 13 level that even at that level, the players kind of gave it an extra inch? Uh, yes, the, uh, you know, uh, when I saw like I got a uh, place for an assistant referee thing uh, for the under 13 derby. So I thought, okay, it's an under 13 thing. So it's going to be less of pressure. But when I went to the ground, assistant referee, you know, uh, just near the stands, I was the assistant referee too. So people shouting from the back and I see so much of crowd just for an under 13 derby. That proves, you know, like the people out here are so crazy about the game and especially about these two Kolkata Giants. No, absolutely. And Shayu Chetan, if I was to put you on the spot, Kerala or Kolkata when it comes to football passion? A taste of his own Wait. medicine. Yeah, it's a, it's a, the first question itself, a point blank question from Suya. <laughs> <laughs> He's been learning from you. Yeah. I'm waiting but, for but, a point but, blank see, answer. See, Suyash, I agree that uh, the, 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 the Kolkata Derby always, yeah, about his, its legacy, it, which is the oldest, biggest, uh, fiercest uh, uh, derby in Asia. No, no arguments on that point. But your question was so direct. So let me complete my answer also in that oh. manner. See, uh, see, uh, to fill the to fill the Salt Lake Stadium, the Kolkata City of Kolkata need two teams. But look at Kochi. Over these ISL years, oh. uh, when, whenever 
whenever Kerala Blasters is playing He's in prepared. Kochi, they need they need they need only one brand name Kerala to fill that stadium with one lakh people. That's the difference. Well, yeah. Shaiju, it's a good answer though. It's a great answer. Hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And you hard to argue with that. Do I? I wonder what uh, the ATK Mohan Bagan and SC's Bengal fans would have to say about that. But we can park that aside for a bit now because uh, talking about iconic derbies, we have an iconic figure who's going to be joining us. Like I like I mentioned before as well, we are sometimes eager to brand and christen people, but <laughs> Bartok Beche, a bona fide league legend, if I may call him that, top scorer, all time top scorer for three different ISL clubs across his short hero ISL career, I'd say, but he's managed to make an impact in the seasons that he's been here. So Bart, why don't you come join us and tell us exactly how have you managed to do that, scoring truckloads of goals for every club? Hello and welcome. Hello, guys. Thanks for having me. I appreciate that. Yeah, right. how have I done? Um, it looks more easier, you know, when you all have a look at it, but uh, it's quite tough. I think uh, what's critical for me, it's my off-season preparations. You know, uh, when the season finishes, you know, I it's kind of a way of life for me. So I don't tend to stop. I keep it going. And um, obviously, it didn't start just uh, last year, a couple of years ago. It's been kind of like, like I said, a way of life for me right from when, you know, I was 13 or 14 years old from, you know, uh, the youth set of, uh, of Paris Saint-Germain, you know, so it became a culture. But as the years progressed, then I got to, with experience, I got to learn more. I got to know my body more. And uh, it's been like a decade now that I have, um, you know, a personal physio that knows me very well. And um. Like I said, once the season finishes, uh, I just keep going. So there are weeks of training. Uh, it might be uh, some weeks might be without the ball, just on the beach, sand, you know, which is really, really difficult. And then I tend to see my physio once a week or once every 10 days. You know, he will have all the scans and everything from my head to toe to make sure everything is all right, be it the deep tissues or whatever. <laughs> and then there are some days whereby or some weeks whereby I have to go on the stairs and then some weeks when it has to be on the field. And um, we all know for the past couple of years now that it's been tough because of the coronavirus. So unlike before where I could just pop up, you know, uh, into any field of play and then start my training. Now I have to rent football pitches to train to avoid contact with many others. So, of course, I'll go to my personal trainer and then one or two other colleagues. Wow. For my individual trainings and um, all that with my physio. So I think for me, what's critical is the off season. So when I come back, you know, and I want to start my season, um, I think I've put myself in the best possible position to, you know, to be successful. Yeah. You know, Bart and, and to the others, they say that a top level elite athlete is all about his process. And it's pretty clear about how Bart goes about his process in the off season as well. Bart, I just want to jog your memory back a little bit. Take a look at this goal that we're going to be playing right about now. And I will ask you about that after we're back. Take a look. Sure. And there's plenty more to come. You can be sure of that. Pascal over once again. A lot of space for him. But you are giving him a lot of space in midfield. Of pitching. Having to drop, drop back in order to get the ball. Why did he want to be there? Where he finds himself now. And here's the header. And here's the equaliser. But he started the move by giving it out wide. And we asked for a little bit of quality from the wide areas. And doesn't he deliver? What a fantastic ball into the box. Sassings, well, he doesn't even know that the man's behind him. The communication there. Pena, obviously not talking to him. And Sass had a look out, and he's left him. No idea, he's just gone to try and kill the space. But look at that, header. And you're right. Yeah, and you look at that uh, celebration, holding the jersey and in, in after scoring the first goal itself. Love the passion on display there, Bart. When you actually got the call from Northeast United FC way back uh, in 2018-19 saying, hey, uh, you know, uh, there's an offer for you from the Hero Indian Super League. Yeah. Do you want to join? What are the first things that sort of go through your mind at that point of time? What were your what were your initial thoughts? At first, I I declined. To be honest, I declined. I said, oh. no, I wasn't going to go there because... Uh, couple of years earlier, I heard about the league just lasting for a couple of months, maybe three. And I wasn't ready to be a part of that. But then I had a really very good friend uh, who had played here. And I gave him a call and I wanted to get more 
information, you know. So I did my due diligence and I heard a lot of fantastic uh, things about the ISL. And so I gave it a second thought. They came back again the second time. So I said, okay, I was going to think about it. They came back the third time and I had already done my due diligence and I started taking that more seriously. And so um, finally I had other options on the table, but, uh, you know, I always come up with this column when I'm filled with, you know, when I'm at crossroads, you know, pros and cons. I come up with this column of pros and cons. The process, the process is critical. And so I said, why not? Why not? Give it a go. And um, I know I had a lot of close friends, even some family members who told me, no, not, not India, not now. You know, you have better options in Europe. Why not stay here? But I was convinced, you know, I listened to my heart. I was convinced that I was taking the best decision for my career, for myself, and I... Um, it turned out to be a shrewd decision. So um, I'm really, really very thankful that I took that decision. And uh, here am I sitting and talking with you guys today. Which is why we are very, very thankful as well that you did end up taking that decision. And we got to see you on full display for the last few seasons. Another person who has done his due diligence on you, Bart, is Varun, sitting right uh, among us over here. Varun, why don't you take it forward? Yeah, like I saw uh, at the age of 17, you were the youngest scorer at PSG, the club you were talking about. And now you're 37. It's been 20 years. You're still scoring goals. Maybe now you're not the youngest, but you always are proving, you know, age is just a number. So you're an inspiration for so many footballers out there, especially, you know, people like Pulas, you know, who are still try, trying for the football career. But uh, <laughs> Ogbeche, you know, what's the secret to it? You know, how has it been like, you know, 20 years and still you're scoring goals right now? You're leading the list this season. So how, what is the secret behind it? I think uh, the secret behind it is uh, passion takes you leaps and bounds. And uh, I really can't complain. I think, honestly, I'm doing the best job in the world, right? There are millions of people mm -hmm. out there who would love to do what I'm doing. And uh, from my very start, I was very lucky to have obviously played with some of the best players who've ever played the game. Like you guys know, like Ronaldinho, Jejo Kocha, mm -hmm. Nicolas Anelka. I can go on calling them. And um, they all took me, you know, in their arms like their little brother then. Right. And uh, I can tell you something. I had my room, you know, with the reserves of Paris Saint Germain, full of posters of Jejo Kocha and Nerka and all these players. And some months later, I was on the field with them. And now nah, this is crazy. Somebody must be kidding. Somebody has to pinch me. You know, I'm dreaming maybe. And uh, you find out that they are really open people, very good people to learn from. And um, I never stopped taking advices from them. You know, I also looked up to them. And uh, of course, some of them at the time were 30 something towards, you know, the twilight of their careers. But um, I learned so much about their passion. I learned so much about their commitment. And uh, when I saw the way they worked, their, their, their work ethic on the pitch, I looked at myself and said, I tell myself, who are you? You have to do more than these guys who've gone so far. So I think uh, that's been one of the things that I took on board right from a really very young age. And like I said, it's the best job in the world. So uh, some of my very close friends and family who know me, uh, I often tell them that success is my only option. And for success to be my only option, I have to put myself in the best possible position to be successful. I talked about my off-season preparations. Is that a guarantee for success? No, it's not. But it's a guarantee to put me in the best possible position to be successful. So I just have to keep on improving as the years go by. And then there are some things that I take off and there are some things that I add on to, you know, like my nutrition, like my rest. And um, I try a lot of that during the off season, you know, to see how it works for me. And there are some things that I've added along the way. And I can only say that I'm thankful to have been able to do all that. And I keep on learning and I'm ready to learn. I think that's also the key to success. Superb. Like there's no end to learning. And the words you said, like it's an inspiration for all the youngsters out there, especially. I appreciate it. Yeah, you, you always learn as much as you can. And mm. I tell you what, I watch a lot of strikers that play my position, but also not just um, the more experienced ones. Like uh, we can talk about Cristiano Ronaldo or we can talk about uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, or I can keep on calling names. Uh, and not just in football, you know, I'm also a crazy fan of uh, NFL, you know, and I watch uh, Tom Brady. I watch a lot of the stars in the NFL and I... I try to see and I try to learn how they get themselves prepared for, for the league. I had um, an assistant coach uh, when I was at Northeast. He also happened to be my assistant coach at the KBFC. Shaiju, I know you know him. 
Sean, and um, who is also a fan of American football. So uh, we are, I, I always likened the ISL to the NFL in terms of the intensity and how short it is. So we have our off season, maybe three, four months that not many leagues in the world uh, have that advantage of having. So it's not what happens during the league, but mostly what happens during the off season. So there are no margins for errors. So you have to make sure you're more than disciplined. And for me, one of the keys is also discipline. You have to be disciplined. Nobody can teach you that. You have to enforce that on yourself. And I try. It's not easy. It's easier said than done, but I try <laughs> as much as possible to remain disciplined. Yeah, absolutely, Bart. You know, you mentioned KBFC uh, in that. You also mentioned JJ Okocha. Is it for him that they used to say so nice, they named him twice? JJ Okocha? He's some uh, player, huh? <laughs> Listen, we still speak almost on a weekly basis. I spoke to him last week. He was in oh, Cameroon no. for the African Cup of Nations. So to tell you from my hero to a teammate, to a roommate, and now really best of friends, you know. And um, my, just, just a short one, my son, a couple of weeks ago, he was playing, uh, you know, PlayStation and he called me and he told me, Daddy, do you know um, a player called Jejo Kocha? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think and he's got a Legends card now. On, on FIFA, that's where that's where he must have seen it. And then I just said, okay, wait a second. Then I sent him a couple of pictures or like three or four on the field and off the field. And he screamed, do you know him? So I, you know, <laughs> nice. I told him a story about how when I was, you know, I only saw him on TV and then I got to play in the same club like him. And then we became from teammates to roommates. And today, if I need anything, he's just right there, you know, just at the press of a button, you know, push of a button. So it's to tell you how life is, you know, it's such mm. a big world, but also it's very small place at the same time. So uh, I still keep on asking those guys for, you know, for, for advices if I have any. And uh, you now I'm just like a sponge. I want to be able to, to take as much as possible inside to, to improve myself in all ways. That's what I'm feeling like right now, Bart. The more you speak, the more I just want to keep hearing and absorbing and imbibing everything that you're saying. Uh, going back to KBFC, which you made a brief mention of, Shaiju Chetan over here uh, wants to uh, pick a bone with you. Of course, after Northeast United FC, you went to KBFC. And then Shaiju Chetan, he had a pretty good run in that club, I would say, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Hi, Bart, actually. I just, I just uh, sitting here and uh, listening to your voice and watching you watching you participating in the LFL live and uh, uh, can I say one thing to you that what I what I am feeling right now absolutely go ahead Shai. Yeah. I, I just feel hey, I'm sorry it. sorry 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 just take it easy and don't be too hard on me please okay? no, 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 no. <laughs> no 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 I just I just feeling a Nigerian eagle is sitting on my right shoulder right now and speaking to me directly I just feeling right now uh, okay that, that, that's amazing to hear. Look, look at that. What a stadium. Huh? What, what a stadium. Look at the fans. Huh? It's, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. Bart, we don't see you scoring those uh, long ranges these days. Is it a conscious sort of uh, decision you're making to be more in the box? Because we want to see more of these creamers uh, in this season as well. I wish I could, to be honest. Not that I don't want to. <laughs> no, Bart, I, Bart, I, Bart I, have a, I have a question for you, of course, seeing these visuals. Sure, tell me. See, uh, see, you played with KBFC 16 matches only, 16 matches. And within a very short span of time, you became the all-time top scorer of Kerala Blasters. So how how special was it for you scoring in front of that crazy crowd in Kochi and being regarded as one of the all-time greats of KBFC still? How special was for you? It is humbling. To be honest, it is humbling. And more than the goals, uh, you know, the fact that I was able to put on the jersey and play for Kerala. I, you know, you hear so many stories about teams and cities, but until you get there yourself, you can't really feel, you know, the emotions don't really show. And um, I had a lot of stuff. I played against them a couple of times, but being part of that team and having to look around, you know, the, the yellow army was really a unique, unique feeling. You know, I can go on, we can stay here for hours and I can go on telling you fantastic things about them. And I have some of the best, best friends, you know, in this in this country, like they come from Kerala, you know, they keep telling me when the season is over, are you coming to visit? You know, I'm constantly in contact with them. And yeah, it was humbling for me to be part of, you know, uh, the KBFC family. And um, like you guys say, once you're part of it, you're always part of it. So 
So um, I'm grateful for that. And um, today, unfortunately, uh, because of the pandemic, we don't have fans in the stadium at the minute. Hopefully, we'll be able to go through all these tough times and have them back because we, we really need uh, all fans in the stadium. And it's it's a unique experience to play, you know, in Kochi in front of those diehard fans. You don't see that a lot around the world. You don't see that a lot. And that's you, something you... coming. Uh, uh, sorry, Shaitan. That's something coming from Bart because he's played all around the all around Europe in in some of the yeah. biggest stadiums. And then for him to say that uh, that KBFC has an atmosphere unique in itself is is uh, is quite uh, uh, fascinating to hear by itself. Shaitan, when is your invite going out to Bart then post season? Absolutely. He, he, I think I think two days before he he gave me. Three hearts in my Instagram for my Instagram post, right? <laughs> Two days ago. <laughs> Those were honest, honest, very honest hearts I gave you, Shai. I appreciate that. <laughs> Invite me anytime and I'll come with pleasure. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, well, Bart, before we now also get into Hyderabad FC, your current team, I just wanted to also speak about Mumbai City FC, who you did spend last season with. Um, I'm sure that you didn't get as much playing time as you yourself would have desired by your own very high standards. But you still managed to make an impact and score goals whenever you were brought on. So did that kind of keep your your hunger and your desire for more minutes on the pitch alive even last season? Or were there points of time where you felt like, man, this is I'm I'm not cut out for this? Maybe I, I mean I'm, I'm built for something different. No, no, not at all. I think that's that comes from humility, and uh, I can tell you I learned so much last season. And you know, more often than not, I learned much much more from from setbacks, you know, than right. from success. And uh, so I found myself in a situation where I hadn't been for years and years. And so I told myself, not what happened to you that really matters is how you deal with the situation that happens to you. So at that point in time, I told myself, do I rather sit down and moan and whine? It's not going to take me anywhere. It's just going to play against myself. Or do I try to navigate through the difficult situation I was in and then be a weapon for the team? I think at the end of the day, we'll end up all being, being very happy. And like I said, and just like you said, I didn't get as many, you know, playing chances like I would have loved or like I've had for a decade or more. But then um, it taught me a different character. You know, I was able to show my true personality. I was able to, to be a leader. And I think a leader is not only when you're playing every day, every night. It's, only, it's also when times are hard, you know, yeah. tough times are facing you, then that's when you show your true character. And I was able to pull everybody everybody in the right direction. And uh, obviously, I sh- could have just folded my hands and said, I don't have anything to prove to anyone. No, but I'm not going to say that I have a lot to prove to myself to start with. You know, and so, um, of course, it ended being, you know, a fantastic season for all of us, a dream season. And uh, those moments are not moments that I forget easily. You know, there are moments that also help me to stay grounded. They help me to stay humble and they, they help me to appreciate more the times that I was on top. And also now I don't take any of these moments for granted because, you know, I've been through ups and downs in my career. And um, the most important thing is to always be able to find the right balance and to stay hungry and motivated. So those pushbacks, you know, they help me to stay more motivated. They, uh, uh, they inspire me more than probably the success that I get. That's lovely, Bart. And we can see how that motivation is helping you and getting through because you are now sitting pretty as the top goal scorer in the current 2021-22 uh, season of the Hero ISL, uh, which is a perfect segue for me to throw it. Varun, you want to come in briefly over there? No, I just wanted to do a thumbs up, like the words he said, like so true. All right, absolutely. No, double thumbs up to you, Bart, for that. Uh, <laughs> let's, just, let's just get into Hyderabad FC now. I'll just throw it to Pulas to, uh, to take that forward. Pulas, why don't you go for it? But first of all, I think your your commentator's dream. Absolutely no doubt about that. You make things so easy. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, I want to ask you about Hyderabad in a sense that now that you've played for so many clubs in India, what is the what is the difference in terms of just for Hyderabad, not on a comparative sense, but what is the feeling like at this club where you've just you've just made it home so quickly? I think the feeling here is um is it comes from from those at the top, you know, from Varun, you know, I, before I signed for Hyderabad, I can tell you I did my due diligence about the club. You know, I was really, really very admirative of their style of play last season. And I think all of us are, you know, they were one of really the teams that made life difficult for everyone last season. 
And uh, I also had a Hernan Santana, which was my teammate at Mumbai City that I asked a lot of questions about Manolo Marquez as the coach. And uh, I only heard uh, great stuff about him. And um, so when I look at those at the top, like I talked about, uh, well, our president, Varon, you know, one of the owners, you know, I heard a lot of things about him. Shaiju, you know, he was at KBFC also. So I, I know he's a diehard, you know, football fan, not just an owner, but he's one apart. And um, I heard a lot of, I, so I got into direct contact with them to ask them about the future and about their goals for the club. And uh, the club is a club with a very huge potential, you know, uh, from the youth setup, not just the first team that we are, from the youth setup, I think they're doing a lot of great things. We can think and talk about their partnership uh, lately with Borussia Dortmund. I think that speaks volume, you know, um, to where the club wants to go. And um, so I thought, listen, I on and off the field, I could be, I could be a weapon. I could be a weapon. And um, I think, um, you know, we, our season so far is indicative of the stride that this football club is making, you know, from how tough it was when they moved to Hyderabad and then last season here in Goa where they made great improvements and to this season, you know, there, there's still a lot for us to accomplish, there's still a lot for us to, to do. We are not there yet, we're not where we want to be yet, but I think we're on the right path. And if we stay locked in, committed, I think uh, we can go places. So um, all that being said, with those on the top, the coaching staff and the and the, the backroom staff, I think uh, it's a club that has all the potential to to be able to go toe to toe with any football club in this country. And I can tell you from what I've seen for the short time I've been here, they're on the right way to to really being successful. Fantastic. I have I have one. You know, we've it's it's sometimes easy to forget that you've had such a storied career before coming to India as well. But just a quick one off the top of my head would be to ask you, what are your top three greatest moments in your career for you? Your best moments in your career, if you were to pick a few, top three is just like that, but maybe it could be more yeah. than that. What are the top, the cream moments of Bart of Bitch's career when you look back? Uh, I often respond by saying uh, they are yet to come, they are yet to happen. But uh, if I look back, I have to say uh, the first one is actually... um making my dream become true by being a professional footballer, right? I was really, I think, just before 17, 16, and probably 11 months about that when I made my debut for Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, it was a dream come true. You know, that's a dream for all youngsters when you, you start playing football to become a professional footballer. You might not make it, you might end up, you know, dropping by the wayside, but that was my, that has to be my very first and then this, uh, the second one has to be uh, representing my country, Nigeria, the, at the World Cup, which was one of my wildest of dreams uh, that came true by far. And um, thirdly, uh, there have been a lot of great moments, but um, I'd rather take the setbacks that has made me to push harder and work harder to become you know, a better version of myself, a better player than I've been. And... Um, with that aim, you know, I'm, I'm just obsessed about what I do, to be honest. I'm obsessed about playing football. It's not just, uh, okay, I'm a professional footballer. I'm, I'm crazy. I'm obsessed about that. And people who are really very close to me, they know that. And um, that explains why, you know, I put in so much effort. I'm really very meticulous when it comes to my preparation for games and for seasons. So the third one, I would take it to be the setbacks, you know, been many setbacks, you know, that has been able to, rather energize me and give me that strength to to keep on growing from strength to strength and and do you have a favorite ronaldinho memory that stays with you because you know this is this is one player who used to play with a smile of course jj okocha is a hero as well yeah. but the one memory that stays with you from either of those two from your from your time with them what is the one thing that has stayed with you the one anecdote that you tell everybody at a dinner table there, there are a lot of things, uh, to be honest. I, it's difficult to, to, to take from one. You know, he's, um, he's South American and we all know they like, you know, the, the barbecue party and all that. And uh, a lot of times I, we did that in his house you know, in Paris. And, but on the field, one of the ones that stayed with me was, um, unfortunately, we didn't qualify for the Champions League that season. But uh, I, remember, I remember he told me he was going to do something crazy on the field. So I was thinking, what was the crazy stuff he was going to do? And that was, uh, if I'm not wrong, I think our very last game against Lille, away from home. 
we needed to win to make it a Champions League, whereas Lille needed just a draw to win. And uh, there was this his, uh, his Ronaldinho style dribble that he actually came up with. And he just told me, I'm just going to do one thing. And that chance, if it comes to you, you have to take it. Otherwise, we're dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> no pressure. Dribble, no right? Pressure. He got that dribble right. And uh, of course, it came directly to me. He got a dribble right. He crossed and he hit up from me, but he wasn't strong enough. And the goalkeeper pulled an amazing save. It's a stunning save. And we unfortunately didn't win that game. But at the end of the, the match, he came back and he told me, hey, you remember what I told you at the start of the week? And honestly, I had forgotten to be to be. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. Now I remember that was what you told me. Yeah. He said, maybe it's not going to happen a lot, but that's one of the stuff that really stuck to me. But apart from that, it was so much fun at training. So much fun. And it was always us against the defenders. And I bet whenever we scored goals or, you know, not make or anything, we, we just stared at them, you know, we mocked them. And so it was kind of inviting for them to, to come stronger and to, to defend stronger and to also in another way to make us better. So uh, it was so much fun and really moments that will be hard to come by again with the likes of Ronnie, JJ, you know, Mikel Ateta, Pochettino, Anel County Field. It was, yeah, unique moment. And I'm, I'm just thankful, thankful to have been part of the dressing room. Yeah, and Shayu Chetan just wants to dig a bit more out of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually taking away from this question itself. Uh, some of the legendary players, like uh, we, we already told about Ronaldinho's, you and Ronaldinho's uh, uh, combination. Uh, you already, uh, in, the, in your PSG days, you played with other legendary players like Mal Michael Arteta or Mauricio Pochettino, uh, who are the legendary managers of some legendary clubs like Arsenal or PSG itself. So my question, I don't think uh, you are not going to stop in the near future, looking at your fitness right now. So in the late future, in the late future, can we expect Bartholomew Ogbeche also taking the managership of some legendary clubs in the world? I appreciate your question. That's uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, I've always said that I, I don't see myself as being being a coach, you know, being a manager. You know, uh, obviously I'm going to stay in football, and uh, I'd love to get into you know management and help a lot of youngsters out there. But it might change. Never say never. But uh, at the minute, I don't see myself being on the touchline like uh, like most of those you know, teammates I had, you know, luckily I'm still very much in contact with them. And some of them always tell me, listen, enjoy now as much as you can, because it's tougher when you're on the touchline. <laughs> it's tougher to be a coach than a player. But um, if you want to be a coach, you know, you can give us a call, come visit us. How many times have, you know, I'm in constant contact also with uh, those at the club in Paris Saint-Germain, you know, and, you know, I told them lately that when my season was going to be over, that I'm looking forward to watching the semi-finals of uh, the Champions League. So they all laughed and said they hope they were going to go that far. <laughs> so it's just to tell you, um, I would love to be in this world because I love it and um, do everything as much as possible to help other youngsters. But at the minute, never say never, but I don't see myself as being a coach. No, Shaiju, I don't. <laughs> is it, is it, Bart, is it because you're too nice? Is it because you're too nice to be a manager? You know, I mean, your personality, it almost seems like you don't have a single mean bone in your whole system and for a manager to be you know you have to be you know slightly cunning in a way no really don't, don't get me wrong i might be nice but i don't think I'm, <laughs> i don't think i'm that nice when i'm on the field you know i can tell you most of my teammates they've been mocking me they've been jesting at me for for having gotten more yellow cards than than, than the defenders over here so I, don't, <laughs> I don't think i'm i'm that nice at the end of the day but um i think it's just not um it's just not the path that I see myself, um, you know, following. But that might change, like I said. But I don't see that happening, really. You know, Pulas, he's so nice that uh, he's got training at 3 p.m. and he's still hanging around with us. Oh, right that's now. fantastic. <laughs> I told you, you see. <laughs> if he becomes a coach, he's going to be the fittest coach in the world. <laughs> right, I have right. to, yeah, we have to speed it up. And, and I run away before something happens to me, like uh, what I experienced once at, uh, at Northeast. You know, I... Uh, ju just a quick one. We, you know, when I first arrived in the country, you know, I have some fond mo memories of, of Northeast, and um, we had a few players that were always coming late. So we now came together, some of the senior players, you know, Matthew Grigrich, uh, 
uh, Guy Egomi, and uh, yeah, I can keep on calling names. And then uh, we called the whole team, only all the players, no staff. And we said, we can continue like this. We have to put some rules, some regulations, you know. So we voted, we came up with, uh, you know, some rules. If you come late, some fines and all that. And we were going to decide on what we were going to do with those fines. It's just all about us. And uh, so now the players that were usually coming late were trying, you know, to avoid that because the fines were quite hefty fines <laughs> <laughs> to deter players from coming late. <clears throat> so we all became, you know, we all became, you know, vigilant. Whenever anybody came late, we will not be get, we will not get upset anymore. We will rather clap for the person for putting money into our piggy bank, right? So uh, after three months, you know, Mato, Rolling Borges, me, we. Were among some of the players that hadn't, you know, had any fine. So I said, that's not happening to me. And uh, once I went for my grocery in the city. <laughs> so I took a car, obviously, from the hotel, got to the city for the grocery, spent about 30 minutes. On my way back, I got into a traffic jam in August, talked like it had never happened before. But I was still re relaxed. I still had two hours before our meeting. And so... Um, and now we're gone, we were still stuck, not even moving, not even 10 meters. So I looked at the driver and I'm like, we have a meeting, are you sure we're gonna make it? He said, sorry, this is just a car, not a helicopter. So I, I, I don't know if it's gonna happen. So at the end of the day, uh, I had barely 10 minutes to get to the hotel. So I called one of the coaches, they wouldn't pick up. So I sent a message that I'm stuck in traffic, but I'm gonna be there for the meeting. So. As you guys can expect, my teammates, they were all waiting and hoping I was going to get late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course they were. Of course they were. Some payback. So, yeah, so they were waiting for that payback moment. So I got there and we had a dress code. I got to the hotel late. I took out my grocery bag and I just replaced my room if you can. <clears throat> I had to go through the scanner, the security check, and just quickly. So I started speeding off. And don't forget one thing. We had a dress code. So I dashed. And like they say, when it rains, it pours. Our meeting room was at the back of the hotel, like 100 meters away. So I was running like mad. Like... I was running like mad. I bumped <laughs> through the door and instead of the coaches getting mad at me, they looked at me like, are you all right? And all, the cl all my teammates were just clapping for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And firstly, I had a fine for arriving late. And secondly, I had the wrong dress because I was in casuals. You know, and... <laughs> I just wow. looked at the coach and said, please don't ask for too much. At least I made it here safe. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but what, how, how are you doing with the punctuality at Hyderabad FC so far? No, so far, time? So, yeah. Yeah. so far, so good. I always try to be punctual. Uh, they, they know sometimes when I get into our meeting rooms, it's a couple of minutes before, but I tell them, listen, it's always on time. It's never probably too early, but never late. So I'm always on time. So I have that bad experience at uh, at Guwahati and um, now it's more difficult because of you know because of the bubble so we just st stuck around so you don't have a lot of excuses for getting late actually no absolutely Bart and I know we're getting greedy over here Shayu Chetan one last quick one before Bart has to jet away for training yeah yeah just a one word just I need just a one word answer Bart please share with us the one Malayalam word you learned from Kerala for the entire Kerala fans. I know all of the Kerala fans are listening, to, viewing this program right now live. Please share with us the one Malayalam word you take it, uh, you take, you took from Kerala. Malayalam. Wow. You know, unfortunately, I don't, I don't get to speak with, you know, a lot of people that I'm, I'm in contact with a lot of people from, from Kerala, you know, from Kochi and all that, Trisha and all that. But unfortunately, I don't get to speak you know, a lot of the Malian and Broads I learned in the past, so they've just, I've just lost them. Unfortunately, I've lost them, but I know when I when I hear them, they will just come back quickly, to be honest. And um, I'm looking forward to every now and then being in contact with them and asking them to chip in one or two words from Malayalam. So um, I don't want to go ahead and pronounce something wrongly and just make you, you know, laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shaju Chetan, why don't you teach him? Why don't you let him know? How, why don't you let him know how to say it was great talking to you guys? <laughs> wow, you guys, I mean, I, that's a long sentence. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, no, absolutely. Bart, thank you so much for being part of the Let's Football Live show. You've been candid, you've been uh, revelatory, and you've been everything and more that we expected it to be. Uh, have a good training session. Have uh, a yeah. fantastic run in the rest of the season. 
Uh, and here's hoping that you keep going from strength to strength because we've spoken a lot about the past, but do know that we want you to stick around for as long as you can and we enjoy watching you week in, week out. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, I appreciate you having Thanks, me. Thanks, Good lot. luck. I spoke a lot about the past because I'm grateful for that, but I'm, don't forget one thing. I'm mindful of the future, so you bet I'll be sticking around for a very long time. Lovely. So good to music, hear. Music to our ears. Thank you, Bart. See you around. Appreciate you guys. Take care. See you. See you. Bye. 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 Well, that was Big Bart Ogbeche and uh, all about the process. Like he said, you know, he has one mind on training, but then he's here with us as well. And he's kind of being candid. He's being, uh, he's being uh, himself. Uh, I, think Shaiju, I think Shaiju was trying to uh, test whether he, he's, he can get him late for training or not. Yeah, maybe maybe he has, maybe he has something uh, going on with the Hyderabad FC backroom staff. Maybe a and this is a good own. time. This is a good time for all of you to be reminded of the fact that at the start of the season, when you asked me who's going to win the golden boot, right, um, right. Just just letting you know. Just letting you know. I mean, <laughs> for last, I would I would I would say something mean to you back, but unfortunately, I don't have anything in my repository at the moment. You are right. You are right, of course, and you may well. Uh, be right with that prediction. You also mentioned something about Navaram Roshan at the start of the season. Yes. So, right. uh, Just coming, through, coming with, through with uncanny accuracy. So we've got to give it to him, guys. Let's, let's have a round of applause for, yes. for Pulas. Thank you. Over Thank here. you. Taking uh, all the validation I can get. So, on, <laughs> so we, can, we, can, we can put it as uh, the Pandit and his boys sitting here. <laughs> ah, yeah. I think I think we'll need to change Pulas' uh, name tag to. It's Pulas. because I've been spending too much time with Macefield. You know, he's been giving me te- teaching me pundit. <laughs> ah, soaking it in. Well, okay. Uh, so that was Bartok Beche uh, for you. But we also have the small matter, not so small matter, of the Kolkata mm-hmm. derby to be played in the evening. Before which, it'll be a good time to look at the upcoming fixtures and the points table as well to see how both teams are stacking up. There you see on Saturday, 29th Jan, ATK Mohan Bagan versus SC East Bengal in the Kolkata derby. And of course, there's a bunch of matches lined up. You have Mumbai City FC versus ATK Mohan Bagan on Thursday, 3rd Feb. You also have uh, FC Goa versus Odisha, two teams that play expansive and open football. So that's going to be a fascinating one. But ATK Mohan Bagan at 8th place and SC East Bengal on 11th. A big high stakes game for both of these sides. How excited are you for the Kolkata derby, Varun? Uh, really excited. You know, the thing is that uh, when it's about the derby, the points table, the statistics, the past, and it all doesn't matter. You know, it's a 100-year-old rivalry and, you know, it's going to be a fresh match, especially for East Bengal. Maybe, you know, they're at the bottom of the table, but it's going to be like, uh, it doesn't matter if you don't win the championship, the title or anything, but this match is important. You have to win the derby. That is the, uh, like, you know, the motion for them. And uh, for ATK Mohan Bagan, they have not got a win in this uh, new year. And they've got a long gap, you know, a couple of their matches got postponed. So, they played well. They did a 0-0 against Turish FC, but they'll try to win this derby. So, I think it's going to be a very thrilling and an amazing Kolkata derby tonight. The stakes are high. And uh, mm-hmm. just to set the tone and set the mood a little bit, uh, take a look visually at what this derby is going to pose for us. Take a look. Abegar Morjadar Shorbocho Sore Lorai Jodi Onubhav Kurte Hoi. তাহলে প্রত্যক্ষ করা দরকার কলকাতা ডার্বি এই দিন দুই ভাগে বিভক্ত হয় আবামোর বাঙালি ঘটি বাঙালের এই শতাব্দী প্রাচীন প্রতিদ্বন্দ্বিতা গুরুত্বহীন করে তোলে পরিসংখ্যান বিমানান হয়ে যায় লিগ তালিকা তাই তো বিশ্বজুড়ে বাঙালি মুখিয়ে আছে সবুজ মেরুন আর লাল হলুদের মর্যাদা আর আভিজাত্যর এই দই রথের জন্য Well, how's, how's, uh, how are your notes coming along for the derby? You have any special goal shouts prepared uh, for tonight? In fact, a uh, question to all of you, if you guys are on the comms tonight, how, how's it coming along? You know, I think um, uh, over the season, when you think of, like, even if when it's off season and you think of something and you read something and you're like, oh, okay, that's a great line. I might be able to use it in the derby during an intro or something. So you're kind of ready for it. It's a long-term process, I guess. And even Shaiju will probably agree to that. Varun will agree to that. His Bengali is fantastic. That was you on the voiceover, right? Just right. <laughs> yeah. 
incredible poetic but, but, poetic that's yeah, why i told you yeah. that the voice over yeah. across i said that yeah. flows like thank you thank you so much but um yeah no you're, you're excited you want to be in the moment as well you don't want to be over prepared because uh you know you want to feel the feed off the energy which is happening on the pitch and then just you know go with the moment and that's the, that's the magic of the derby it can take mm. you anywhere so just ride the wave yeah and shayu chetan atk mohan bagan will be hoping to ride on the wave of their previous victory against sc east bengal although a lot of matches have been played and a lot of water under the bridge has passed in the meantime but the last game atk mohan bagan really dominated sc east bengal uh, as we have the visuals of that game coming up over here but they were under a different head coach at that point of time don't forget so do you expect to see uh, something different along uh, along the lines for atk mohan bagan this time around against sc east bengal yeah it's a good point to discuss with because uh, uh, we all know the the first derby of the season uh, ended up on a 3 nil uh, in favor of atk mohan bagan and before going into the second derby to, uh, today uh, we can say that a little edge is yeah definitely uh, an edge and a mental a physical edge on the paper is uh, towards uh, atk mohan bagan only looking at their uh, lineup and all but see uh, both the teams possessing the legacy uh, like we discussed earlier so uh, it is uh, it is all regarding about the brand of football they mean to play this uh, regarding about the brand of football because we know the we know the heat uh, we know the importance of the derby so we expect uh, sc east bengal also put up a nice replay yeah. to the first match defeat today for that they need to uh, i think uh, for that sc east bengal should score an early goal today and they have to defend well and players like antonio perosevic should understand the importance of the right. derby match and yeah. he has to perform because he's a high profile match you should know that hmm. yeah you know i'm i'm so tempted to not say it but it's just coming out of my mouth right now maybe it's just derby day form book goes out of the window is that is that true no way you know yeah yeah but 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 i think chaji was right when he said that we need uh, it would be amazing to see east bengal come up with a response i think the yeah. first derby they will be disappointed because of the way they completely wilted <clears throat> under the pressure could have been more goals could have been worse uh, right. but there have been runs in the past you know where both uh, clubs have gone like for years without winning a game exactly. or the other and we are at that kind of a stage right now between these two uh, because in the hero isl uh, sc bengal have not uh, won a single derby yet so yeah. there is that bragging right on the line and and i just hope that you know there is an anomaly tonight no yeah, no absolutely we just hope for a cracking game of football that's that's all we hope for and uh, to to kind of refer to another you, you were talking about how teams sort of seem to have runs over the other over a period of time where yes. the other team just can't seem yes. to beat them yeah. so uh, sc east bengal's mocha tonight uh, anyone <laughs> uh, can be you know there are expectations from the new signings to like ribeiro and sota you know maybe something uh, like a spark from them so maybe you know uh, obviously perswich the red and gold brigade is depending on them and uh, what we need tonight is a very good fight actually and you know best wishes for both the teams actually yeah uh, so we did actually end up uh, doing an interview with hira mondal uh, an interview that uh, varun took earlier in the week and we published it today so do go ahead and uh, have a look at that hira spoke from the heart it's all about uh, his journey and his passion for the game and and the values and ethics that really uh, he upholds on a daily basis that allow him to perform at the level that he does uh, so fascinating interview and fascinating uh, uh, voice over as well varun i say fascinating because i don't know how you manage to to add that that heightened sense of excitement to it yes ayush chetan uh, varun what, what was that goshti bengal what was that that's uh, ghoti bangal pardon ghoti and bangal you know uh, the bengal is divided today is the kolkata yeah. derby so you know epar bangla upa bangla so the ghotis and the bangas is a clash of the yeah. elish and chingri the different kinds of fishes yeah. they all are the bengal the, the bengal division yeah for the 90 minutes for the 90 minutes and then let's hope we get to see some fireworks on the pitch tonight uh and again as we come to the end of uh, another let's football live episode it's been great fun guys we've had bart come on we've had uh, have the kolkata derby to look forward to this evening uh and here's hoping to uh, to get some exciting goal shouts from all three of you uh, later in the day yeah well then we'll leave you with the goals of the week uh, to everyone watching and we will be back next saturday at 2 pm like we always do on the let's football live show until then from us it's goodbye Have a good Goodbye. day. Bye.